I guess we recorded this uh, auction lots review with uh, the usual team of Ranj and Rod and Jay. And um, uh, having recorded this, uh, we cut this into two pieces because there was so much content. We thought it's better to be uh, cut into two videos. So the first video is here and uh, check it out. We're reviewing four lots and the next one's going to be available on Friday and uh, it will be released on our channel as well. So make sure you subscribe uh, to our channel and uh, follow us for the updates and uh, the, the new videos that uh, will be coming. Also, check out our live auction commentary, link in the description below. So welcome everyone to uh, another auction review that uh, we haven't done for quite a few months, I think four or five months, uh, but we are back in our usual team Rod Turner from Rodcast and Ranjan Bhattacharya at Ranjan Property and uh, Jay Howard and myself, co authors of Before, Before the Hammer Falls, the insider's guide to property auction success. So, today, uh, guys, yeah, I think uh, it's been five months, four or five months, so it would be good uh, for us to reintroduce ourselves in case uh, people forgot uh, who we are, what we do, and uh, Let's, uh, uh, let's, let's start with who, Rod. Hi everyone, my name is Rod Turner. Um, I am the host of a podcast called The Rodcast, which is all about asset-backed investments with a focus on UK real estate. Uh, my background is in development, um, mostly in London and Manchester, and I own a property investment company and we buy all sorts of things from commercial and industrial, uh, right through to residential developments as well. Okay, brilliant. And uh, Ranjan? My name is Ranjan Bhattacharya. I've been investing in developing properties for 30 years. Uh, these days focusing much more on commercial property and uh, repurposing defunct commercial properties. You can find me on YouTube. We've got 27,000 subscribers, lots of videos on there. It's Succeed in Property uh, in case you missed it. Brilliant. Jay? Uh, hi everybody, my name is Jay Howard. Um, I'm a property auction expert. Um, I've been buying and selling properties uh, through auction for 12 years and I worked as the auction manager for an auction, a London auction company for six years. Um, and yeah, uh, I like commercial properties, short lease properties, and I've recently gained a little bit of a hankering for some, uh, some ad hoardings. Um, I think of that what you will, but I'm always happy to share. Okay, brilliant. Well, I've been trading properties for about uh, 10 years in auctions and uh, working with investors on the buying side and the selling side. And at the moment, uh, uh, we've got our um, venture called Hammett, where we help people maximize the uh, auction sale prices, basically. And uh, that's uh, our job. We're selling eight properties in the auctions uh, this month. And uh, a couple of those we're going to discuss on this call. So, um, but let's let's start with uh, with basically the way we're going to do this whole uh, episode is uh, we all picked two lots each, and we're going to spend about five minutes on each lot, just reviewing and giving our thoughts and comments on what we think about them, why we would buy them, why we would not buy them, and uh, what maybe we think those properties are going to sell for. So uh, I'm going to share the screen and uh, I'm going to let the guys um, basically share about uh, what they, uh, what made them pick the, the particular lot. And uh, let's start with this one. Um, High Street South Norwood, it's uh, Ranjan's suggestion. Ranjan, do you want to introduce? Yeah, that? it's a lovely, uh, cheeky little number, this one. It's uh, in London. It's well located. It's close to the station, Norwood Junction Station, only 300 metres away. Plenty of good stores in, um, in proximity. What's up for grabs here is basically the entire freehold. And uh, this could be an interesting opportunity for a breakup. Um, the, the flats above the shops uh, are all a decent size, actually. And the, and the legal pack doesn't really disclose this yet. Interestingly enough, uh, there are no floor plans in the legal pack. There are uh, no EPCs in the legal pack either. You've just got the site plan. Um, but if you go to the EPC register, you can look at the EPCs 
for the individual flats um, above the shops. And they're all about 48 square meters, but they're described as one bedroom. So there may be an opportunity to reconfigure them a little bit and uh, sell them on. Uh, you'd be hard pushed to get less, for two, less than 200 grand for a flat in that area. So there is a little bit of a breakup thing here. The other thing I'll emphasize about the commercial space, there's so much doom and gloom about commercial property um, and particularly the letability of it uh, these days. And there's a report out today that 9,000 shops have closed uh, this quarter um, throughout the UK. And that's what you see the, in the headlines. But also in that same report commissioned by PwC, they also said that 4,000 shops had opened during this last quarter. So, and this is one of them. And it's a certain type of shop that's closing. It's usually the stuff that's selling products that you could get off in the internet now. And it's a certain type of shop that's opening. And the shops that are opening are opening in areas which have an immediate uh, catchment area of affluent footfall, which this area of South London does, relatively speaking. And also it's been actually let to a cafe. They're doing a full fit out at the moment um, and, and planning to open as a cafe. It's those sort of businesses that need uh, affluent footfall in close proximity where you can't deliver the services over the internet that seems to be opening up so it's an interesting prospect quite a lot of space there there's also a little bit of development potential it would be very easy to put something on the roof uh, i love these sort of victorian buildings where you've got this parapet wall around the outside because if you were to put an additional floor you'd never see it from the street scene so there's very little planners can say about it um, so Lots of um, interesting tidbits on this one and not a bad guide um, for the yield as it is. R Ranjan loves a corner plot, don't you? You love yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. Corner, uh, where you, you get maximum exposure for that part A of the retail, um, as much window space as you can. But yeah, I, I think it's a really good buy. I agree with everything you said, like the development on top. Um, also, it, in terms of it's, it's a pretty solid lease as well. No breaks, I think. Um, decent enough yield. And, and as you said, I mean, 200 grand per flat, I think, is very conservative uh, for that area. So, yeah. I, I, yes. I, like I mean, I discounted a bit because you guys, it's obviously You guys a think this is conservative because I keep seeing flats in South Norwood coming to an auction and they struggle to sell for that. 170 150 mark and it's it's a bit i think I'm not it's, sure i think it's dependent on the type of flat like like you said it's it's a good looking building this it's it's not kind of in a parade ex local things like that i'm also just one point on this is the picture a cgi or is it an actual picture it's can we go back to it picture, well, why do you say that they normally do that on new bits. It looks like the way people are moving. It does look like someone's just created a CGI. Like the oh, the block of flats to the rear doesn't look real. Yeah, <laughs> that's what yeah. I was thinking. I was just wondering if it's an enhanced ex council block. Oh right, I, I thought you were <laughs> going to talk about the weather because obviously it couldn't be sunshine. Well, well, also because I think they said it's under um, the actual ground floor unit is um, is being refitted. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. So I'm. I'm I'm not sure if that is a picture. I think that's more of a CGI show. I, th I think that is a picture. Um, um, you can see the sign is the sign of the cafe that's opened ah, up. Okay. Um, in the legal pack, there's a nice uh, license to do all the alteration. It's just boarded up. Yeah. Um, in the legal pack, there's a license to do the alterations, which has been agreed by the landlord. And it shows a good fit out. That's yeah. the other thing I look at. So yeah. I would say that picture is definitely enhanced. Yeah. It's um, not, not real, but it's enhanced. So what you're saying um, is expensive. That, on that, listen, that I don't know. They may have enhanced it. Um, but one of the things I look at uh, when, when you're look, assessing an incoming commercial tenant is what skin in the game are they putting in? Um, and they seem to be spending a decent amount of money on this fit out and in terms of the kitchen equipment and all the rest of it which is money that they're putting in. So they are committed to making this business work, which is an indicator that I look at of a potential commercial tenant. One of the things that I don't like about those buildings, and they've got those butterfly roofs. I really don't like those butterfly roofs. Butterfly roofs, as I call yeah, them. Yeah, they, they go like in. 
to that. Inverted V, why? Why don't you like them? Because they just cause all sorts of trouble. And uh, and then I don't know, how, how would you change it? How would you like increase the space? That it's, it's just like... A, they're, they're, actually, how, they're big opportunities. Yeah. Uh, I love butterfly roofs. It's, it's the typical Mary Poppins um, scene, the Chim Chimney. If you remember that movie, where you can dance, you can not only can you do a song and dance number on the roof, but they're very good for adding an extra floor because if you, because of the uh, the the outside has got this power pit um, wall, um, if you were to recess any extension, a loft extension by a meter in from the uh, street, you literally would not see that uh, at all from the street. Okay. And that's why they're very very powerful. Okay, good to know. I wouldn't have thought so, but good to learn new things. Okay, brilliant. So, what, what would you pay for this, Ranjan? Um, well, I, I think I would be uh, looking at not much over guide, quite frankly, uh, for it to be a good solid deal. You'd want it to yield as it is in excess of 7%, in my view. And yeah. then you've got the um, other stuff as icing on the cake type of opportunity. Got it. And anyone would pay more? I'm, I'm, possibly. I think you've got to be sure that you're going to get something on that roof as in another unit and not just increasing the size of the unit below. Absolutely. Um, and if you can, then I'd be looking at, if you're getting a 6% yield and it's cash flow from day one with the opportunity to uplift there another 200 grand possibly, then... I, I think that looks good, but again, it's it's doing your homework and making sure yeah. that the sizes add up and things like that. So yeah. I can, I can see someone paying more for that. It's okay. unlikely you'd get planning permission for a separate flat on the roof. I um, think it's a bit small. It wouldn't come if you recess because the top floor, I've, the top floor flat, which I've checked out, is forty eight square meters. So you yeah. wouldn't make a London plan flat on the top if you have to recess the sides by a meter. So it'll have to be an extension to the existing flat. Um, which may or may not be worthwhile depending on the numbers. But I think money can be made simply by reconfiguring the existing floor space because I think 48 square meters for a one bedroom flat is quite generous. Yeah, okay. That wasn't yet, yeah, it's a generous for one bedroom, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maybe that's it's... indicative of the kind of properties I develop. <laughs> well, these are an improvement range, and these ones have windows. <laughs> I've, I've, always, I've always given them windows, you know, and, and Windows 10. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay, well, let, let's move to the next lot. Uh, so, this one is. Uh, in Watford, so that's a uh, road slot. Rod, do you want to introduce this one? Uh, yeah, sure. So this one is a block of, um, I think it's, is it nine flats or six flats? Uh, nine. Is, uh, uh, no, ten flats. Oh, no. Oh, it's a 14 flats. That's it, 14 total flats. With planning for the nine. And, it, and it's got planning for nine. All the, um, the flats, the existing ones are sold off on long leases, but six of them have 54 years left, and then four of them have 85 years left. Um, so you're getting ground rent for that, but it's also got the planning permission for nine new build flats as well. So there's, there's a few different angles here. Obviously there's the development potential, um, of making money off, that, off those nine new builds. But there's also as well on the um, uh, the rent from the ground rent, but increasing these uh, these leases because a lot of them are coming up for renewals. Well, you would have thought are kind of almost past that point. Yeah. Um, and th those are starting to get quite valuable. Fifty four years left on a lease on a flat is is a is a significant amount. Um, that would be about thirty k to minimum to extend. Yeah, I mean, one. I mean. It's looking at what the ground rents are and things like that. Yeah. Um, and again, on the 85 years, I mean, getting a mortgage on anything sort of under 80 years is pretty difficult. So you, you're not long in the tooth there, and I'd be expecting people to be renewing those leases as well. Yeah. I'd want to have a look at who actually owns those flats. Um, 
again those existing ones is it the council maybe and trying to have an idea of why it is that um, I'd imagine it's the same owner that owns the ones that haven't been renewed for 54 uh, years and I'd imagine it's the same owner for the other four as well yeah um, and also there's four others which I'd imagine have got separate owners that have been renewed because they haven't really been mentioned there so it'd be interesting to have a quick look on um, on Lamred just to work out who they are and maybe even contacting them to find out what it is that they're looking to do with with those with those flats um, they're also the, the nine flats that have got planning are one beds with a study. Now, what that really means is it's, it's well, essentially it will fit two beds, but for planning reasons, they can't put that in as a second bedroom because of the size of the flat. So again, opportunity in that as well, depending on how you're dressing them up to sell or to rent. Um, there's certainly opportunity there. So I think there's just, I think there's a few different angles here and I just quite like the look of this one. It was something slightly different to talk about, I suppose, with the, uh, with renewal of ground rent and also a development angle too. Yeah. And so, also, I'm sorry, the other, the other option of course would be, um, to take up the existing flats and reconfigure them. So to almost buy them back off the leaseholders and look at doing extra extra units there so i think there's a few different angles brilliant i think uh, there's a few things that jump out to me like straight away when i looked at this property uh, number one it's kind of squeezed into between m1 and a41 uh, and it's kind of not the most um, desirable location i mean it's got good transport links but a bit, <laughs> a bit too good <laughs> For commuters, <laughs> definitely great for commuters. And uh, and another thing is uh, concerns me is that the planning that is there is actually for another floor, basically above yeah. uh, above the whole block. Uh, so let me just do the gallery. So basically, we have to do the whole roof. And uh, on our auction bias auction bias club call a couple of weeks ago, we had a whole review about in what legal issues come up when you want to do something like that above uh, a block of flat that already has got leases in place mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the major things that come up with this is all those leases will have um, like there's few few different things that come up but one of the major ones that it's very difficult uh, to overcome is that all the leases in place even if they are 40 years to expire and stuff they have the right to um, the covenant for quiet enjoyment mm -hmm. and uh, if you're doing the roof if you're taking off the roof in order to develop it that's going to have a massive impact on the quiet enjoyment and uh, if you have a block that's broken up into pieces and there's lots of different issues that could cause issues i think i think what it means is it's going to increase the cost of the build because you'd have to take that into consideration if it was obviously an empty block you'd be whipping off the roof and and doing yeah. what you can do but actually what you need to do is soundproof that first before then going on to doing the build so it's going to it's going to be quite an increase on the build cost to do that mm -hmm. I, I, th I think actually a mix of what you had said in the first in the first instance <clears throat> in order to really kind of realize and add the value to this you're probably going to have to try and negotiate back the the leaseholds and then do a full redevelopment i, th I think if you, uh, i think i think that offers the most uplift for the whole scheme yeah, yeah. but yeah. it's whether or not it depends and that's why finding out who the leaseholders are is quite yeah. key and i don't think you've got 14 separate leaseholders here I think I, by the looks of how the lease is structured, you've probably got at least, six. Two, uh, at least two owning 10 of them. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 That is good. How have you demised that? <laughs> because they've all got the same leases. Oh, I see. When they were renewed in length. Okay. Okay. But again, okay. It's, it's a guess. I haven't looked at them on, on Lamred or anything. Normally, when you're dealing with the existing buildings and you want to put a roof on, I mean, I'm involved in one of them at the moment. It's a share freehold. I'm Lisa, uh, one of the share freeholders, and we're doing a JV with the developer who's putting extra floor on top. But the the issue is all about um, uh, basically bribery. You know, you can normally buy them off 
by offering them something that they want. And they, what they usually will want is a extension up to a normal um, lease length and also um, some lowering of service charge. I mean, a big um, incentive is that, well, you've got all these extra people in to contribute to the service charge element. And another thing is to carry out improvements to the communal parts of the building. A package of those sort of measures usually makes people more amenable. Um, well, that is interesting. Is running up for repairs. If the building is due for repairs, I mean, we've done this with smaller buildings where there have been four flats and we wanted to put a loft, uh, we wanted to go into the loft. And we always say to say to them, look, we'll, we're doing the roof anyway, so you don't have to touch the roof. We'll renew all the gutter pipes and we'll renew the entrance door and all of this sort of stuff. So we put in a bunch of works. Um, which essentially they don't have to pay for. And um, we're covering as bribery for letting us uh, do what we're doing. So that usually works. And also the cost of doing that once you've got people on site, is going to be a hell of a lot exactly. lower than what it would yeah. exactly. be for their service charge. So it's, it's, it's a win-win really for both sides. Yeah. So I, th I think with this lot, it's, it's, really, it's not just a calculation of the GDD and... Uh, and the normal 120 pounds per square foot mm -hmm. cost and stuff. There's a lot of uh, details that go into the, the assessment of this, this project. And, and I think uh, it, this is gonna be purchased probably by someone who is uh, kind of a long-term kind of uh, landlord or long-term. I, I, I would imagine it's one of those uh, people who owns maybe the four or the six leaseholds already would certainly be right. looking at it or would be looking to JV with someone doing it because they tend to benefit in probably more than anyone else, really, don't yeah. they? And that's, what, that's what's so good about auctions, because you've got those natural buyers for this property. Well, when you put it on the market, then there's like a variety of different people that are gonna look at it. And uh, you, you almost like encourage those leaseholders to like, okay, now is the time. You're either doing it now, or you're probably never ever gonna do it, and you have to pay. 200k for these extensions in the future so uh, it's a good uh, incentive uh, program for their for the existing leaseholders i think if the right freeholder buys this i think I, I think the development will become viable i think if but if you're not a practiced freeholder and you don't know how to incentivize um in the right kind of way then i think you're gonna you're gonna hit a wall I think uh, a party wall act of, of ho a whole hell of issues if you don't if you don't work it properly. Absolutely. I think the benefit you have is that there are short leases already, so there is something that you can offer on the table which is very valuable to these uh, to these leaseholders as well. So yeah. that's where the development can come into its own. And also, it's seven on the top, and it's also two of the new ones will be a. Um, uh, New, new real from the on the rear or the side, I think it is. Yeah. Okay. So what's what's your guess? Guide price six hundred. Goodness. I mean, I think. I don't, I don't, are you asking what do I think it will sell for, or what would I pay for it? Because then <laughs> you have the two prices. <laughs> well, again, I don't think I'd be. Oh. I probably wouldn't go for this because for me it's too many moving parts that are out of my control. Yeah. But I do think for the right person, like we've talked about, they they could be looking to go a, a little bit over guide price, but I, I wouldn't be expecting it to be going over seven hundred grand. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Likewise. Well, let's see. It's quite an affluent area and uh, a chunky block like that might be of interest to a lot of people and there's a solid buying community in that hendon and surrounding area but i to be honest i think it misses the mark for the um for the long play freehold ground rent investor because of the price and i think because of the 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 existing leaseholders i think that will put off quite a few of the developer types um again i haven't actually checked the legal pack but if i was the um the seller i'd be looking to uh, get this signed off with all the leaseholders and then put it into auction because i yeah. think i think that's you're, you're losing a lot of potential buyers in that. so I think, yeah. I think that could be could be useful I, I don't know they may have already done it but i haven't actually had a look i think this okay. is a um 
Um, this is going to be picked up by someone who's connected with the site. Um, I think the extra floors on buildings are all very well, but they're far easier to do on a flat roof. Um, the, the, this sort of 1930s or 1940s pitched roof is, is a lot more difficult. A lot so more it is, I'm finding it very intriguing because I like those kind of roofs instead of the butterflies. You like the butterfly, but you don't like this one. <laughs> What's going on, Ranzo? <laughs> no, it's all the, you buy that one, you've got the place and you, and you can have it, you can have it vacant and then do the works. <laughs> the, the, the problem I yeah. fear with this sort of thing is that, um, as Rod rightly says, it's important, very important to find out who's living there and who the leaseholders are. Um, because it, a lot of the time you get with these leases, which are short, you tend to get older folk in them. And, you know, a 75 year old lady does not really want all this stuff going on, no matter what, what inducement is on offer. Um, so it's very, very important to find out who's in these blocks. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Let's move to the next one. It's a, it's a change of uh, scenery. A little bit of a commercial property. Jay, this is your one. Uh, do you want to just introduce it for the broadcast people? Absolutely. So this is one and one a Brook Parade in High Road Chigwell. Um, that's Essex IG7. It's a freehold retail investment with potential. And that includes a, um, a shop on the ground floor, which is let um, and guaranteed by Domino's Pizza until 2038 with no breaks. And the upper floors are sold off um, with leases of 77 years um, unexpired. Um, there are no arrears. Um, there is a large rear yard, which is spoiling for development. Um, and there is obviously um, a bit of a flat roof with a slight parapet. Uh, which could do with an additional floor if you could get back the leases or do anything phantasmical. So what's everyone's views on this one? I looked at this lot and um, what intrigues me a lot is how come Domino's Pizza has been so generous with this lease because they took on this property in 2018, two years ago and exactly two years ago, almost uh, two years and one month. They're paying £33,000 per annum for, and they've got another 18 years left on the lease. And they haven't even started operations after two years and the shop is still empty. I mean, talk about a net yield. <laughs> um, uh, um, yes, I mean, uh, Domino Pizzas are one of the good guys that are, that are out there uh, in terms of the commercial property tenant um, market. I, that did concern me actually. Why haven't they started their fit out? Because they tend to have to put in a lot of money into fitting out one of those Domino Pizzas places. But Domino Pizzas are quite different from many of the other um, companies. Uh, some of the other commercial tenants, they operate prop co op co structures so that they they basically have a trading business. Um, I don't want to name any because I don't want to sort of you know, get hassle from anyone. But they have a. Do they serve coffee? And they have a property business which rents all the properties from the landlord. Have sandwiches. They can close the property business at any time. With DP Reality, your lease is directly with the trading entity. So you're, you're, you've leased directly to the entity that operates Domino Pizzas. Um, and, they have, and they tended to sign up for 20 year leases with no break clause because um, for their business model, that adds value to that lease. Uh, I haven't got really time to sort of go into why, but it just does. Um, so the, the issue here is why haven't they fitted this out? They're stuck with that lease uh, until 2038, and the only way out is to close down Domino Pizzas. But um, why haven't they fitted this out? Because it seems a nice site and a good area. That would be it's a good it. corner plot. You love a good cor corner plot. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> with a parapet too. <laughs> I think, I think one, one benefit here is obviously it's been going two years and there being no arrears um, is quite, it's yes. quite a useful point to, be, to make because especially with some of these bigger companies as Ranjan's kind of been alluding to is some of them have not been uh, very good even though their balance sheets uh, can afford it at paying their rent through, um, through COVID and uh, as, as Ranjan was kind of talking it's, this is about who who is securitizing that income 
and it's quite a it's quite a solid covenant there um trying to look at what the risk could be in in that lease um i can't i can't spot many and it looks like they're just trying to get whoever the owner is trying is knows something that we don't <laughs> and is trying yeah. to get get shot of it but it's what is it that they know uh that we don't understand and is it something that they're going to decide to renegotiate on their lease or can somehow wiggle out of that again without reading the lease kind of in detail you you don't know but that does concern me um with it being empty and and why it's going into auction because for me that looks like it's a it's a solid a solid property I mean, would you let the, would you let them buy themselves out of that that 20 year lease uh, and then relet it planning. It depends if I had planning on the property for the uppers and, and, and to do to do that. I'd do that. Actually, the uppers are uh, are shortly are on seventy seven year leases, so they're they're sold off. Yeah, but I'd want to do something on that roof. On the roof, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. The roof is up for grabs. the The interesting, I think, the interesting thing about this, if I was looking at this, I'd want to find out the history and, and why um, Domino's haven't kitted out that shop. Um, so the first thing I'd be doing is uh, going to my Google Street View and using the option so you can look back in time and yeah. looking for, I'd be looking for commercial boards uh, on that property in the last few years. And I'd be reading those up and finding the history of that because someone has leased that property to DP Reality and they will know why they haven't occupied. Once I've answered that question, if it's just a case of the refit is starting next month, because I know Domino Pizzas are actually looking to expand. They're actually looking for um, about 50 stores over the next year. So why haven't they fitted out this one in a great location? Um, just need to find out why that is. It might be something simple. They're waiting for some planning permission for some big um, um, uh, flu at the back for, 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 for all the uh, waste of smoke or whatever it is. I mean, you just don't know. But yeah, I think when I, when I look back on Street View, it's, it's pretty much been empty since the bank closed. So it's it's been empty for like three or four years. Okay. So, um, but you're yeah, right. The, to definitely back look back at. Situation. Yeah. Definitely look to see who the commercial agent was and give them a call. That's a brilliant bit of advice. Okay, sounds good. Well, um, it, this one I think it's very difficult to guess what it might go for. It, it's. Uh, Everyone likes a bit of a, a five percent yield on a good, on a good commercial solid income with a bit of potential, but I don't think it's going to go for much uh, above the guide price on this one. I'd still personally go for this. I think I think whatever the issue is, it's fixable. the The site is is in a good location. You know, again, close to local transport links. There are a couple of different things that you could do and play around with. I think there's good value in this. The other interesting thing is, you know, the, with the rooftop development, uh, because of, it's a corner plot and there's plenty of access to the side, you could get rooftop access without impinging on the existing upper floor flats, um, which is a rare opportunity. You can't really exploit those opportunities with mid-terrace properties. You've got yeah. to kind of <laughs> own an internal way up. Mm. yeah okay good next one is uh let me just open it up so this one is a property we're actually selling um as uh with uh, joint agents hamet and uh, we're selling this on behalf of our client and this is a property in uh, bristol and it's um it's actually a freehold property with a commercial shop and a flat sold off on a lease. And uh, basically, here's a better picture of this property. So this is what this is a whole freehold with the flat sold off. So the, the upper two floors are sold off, but it's got all this 
real space, which currently it's all a commercial property with like a little garage at the, at the bottom uh, at the bottom of the or at the top of this picture, and all the neighbors pretty much have got those massive extensions. Uh, this is a muse house, and uh, I think there's another flat in there as well. Uh, there are three flats in this uh, in this bit over there, and this one it's pretty much a virgin property and uh, I think there's a lot of development potential. It's priced as, as a commercial. If you relate it at about you know, 12, 13,000 pounds per annum, uh, you're gonna get your 10% on, 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 on guide. But I think the real money is in the development and in what someone can do with that real site. Um, and Ranjan, you are the expert in real extensions and all sorts of uh, funny things uh, being done to commercial property. What would you do with this one? What's the access? The access through the rear. <laughs> <laughs> access is from the rear. There's a service road in here. So all those properties I access uh, the, 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 the rear extensions from the service road. And yeah. there's like a little pathway. So each property you can see there's a pathway here that leads see. to the upper flats. So the upper flat here, this, this one actually has been split into two flats. And uh, there are access for this rear. Yes. So and there's nothing there's nothing at the rear at the moment. So the, the picture on the uh, the little picture on the bottom uh, is a little garage. This is the this is the picture. So this is the shop all the way there. And this is like a little the bottom place. of the screen, the bottom right. The bottom right, this one. Yeah. So the CGI. Okay. You can see the little garage that's up there. Yeah, this is a CGI. So the, this white building, it's a computer generated picture of what might be possible. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. So yeah. In oh. here, there is, I don't think we've got a real picture up here yet. Yeah. But it, it will come. So basically, at the moment, there's a garage. That's okay. End of uh, uh, with this sort of opportunity, there's no permitted development. It's under full planning. But the thing is, as president, there's, it's, all, it, it's the only one that hasn't been done. Um, so it's pretty clear cut. So I think they're selling this as though planning is already in the bag. It's just a formality. It's never as simple as that, but it's highly unlikely to get resisted to build some sort of two-floor two structure there. And the other thing I love about this sort of thing is that um, you don't really want to be the, when you've got one of these rear passages, you don't really want to be the first one to put a residential unit there because anyone who lives there will be going past all the commercial bins and all the rest of it and it won't really feel like a residential street. Whereas this one, it's already established as a residential kind of um, area uh, so, and you're just infilling the last hole in the rear. <laughs> I, I think I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> so the the only thing that concerns me on this is I'd want to have a look at um, those other ones that have been converted to residential and just check how they were done um, yes. whether it was done through permitted development because I'd be very concerned if that was the case that they were done through permitted development from existing buildings and especially with what's going on at the moment with um, uh, space standards and things like that I'd just be, that would be my kind of main concern as to, although there might be two or three flats in one of the others, well, what is it that you're trying to get? And are people expecting to get a similar amount of units? Because maybe uh, it could be the case that that, that can't be done now. Um, but I'm, yeah, with, with Ranjan on the fact, there's definitely a structure you can put up there. And I, I don't think there's any issue with it being residential. It's just how many units and the size of it that I think is, uh, is going to be what's called into question there. Absolutely. Yeah. And, al and also, sorry, um, what does the lease on the shop say? Does it own that whole uh, area? And what's your agreement? Yes, with so, the so actually the, lease, uh, the, the shop is just being vacated uh, by the current owner. It's a retirement mm -hmm. uh, exit. So the shop's just basically being packed up and it's going to be vacant. Okay. Um, I, think, I think that the, the, the potential there is, uh, like, like, like you all say, it's the, 
fact that you can go for the full planning application. And, and I think that there's some permitted development rights because this is an A1 shop. So you would be able to get something under permitted development. It would not be ideal for the scheme, but I think that gives uh, people the fallback position so they can use that in their full planning application where they can maximize the value of the site. And I think that's the, um, that's the real value in this site.